This is a quick video to show you the easiest way to convert an Epson XP15000 printer for DTF printing. As you can see, we have a brand new machine. We have a brand new set of starter cartridges. And of course, you'll need a Phillips head screwdriver. Magnetic tip definitely helps. And a set of pliers. The very first thing we're gonna do is remove all the blue tape, you know, just like you would with a brand new printer. And you'll find that it's uh, all throughout the system, even in the tray here, you gotta remove that. All right, we have removed all of the blue tape at this point. So the next step, we've taken the uh, foam block out of the print head. The next step is we actually do need to boot this up and initialize it with the, uh, the loading cartridges that come with the printer. Once it's been booted up the first time, we'll go ahead and do the conversion, which essentially consists of removing this whole bar right here, uh, including the star wheels that would otherwise track ink all over your DTF film. All right, now we've gone ahead and removed the uh, plastic caps from all the ink cartridges, and we're gonna go ahead and install them into the printer in the uh, slots that they are expected to be installed into. So there's gonna be our red right there. Magenta. Yellow, cyan, looks like black, and gray. You see there's a little uh, piece of plastic back here that kind of hooks under, and then you push it down into place. And now that we're all set, we're gonna go ahead and uh, fire this baby up and go through the initial process before we even begin to convert anything. The rest of this process is gonna take a minute, so I'm just gonna let the printer do its thing. It's a step-by-step -step process, easy to follow, so uh, just refer to Epson's default instructions for installing a new XP15000, and you should be fine at this step. Okay, the initial installation is complete. Now it does want us to go through some adjustments, but we're gonna go ahead and skip those for now. It's a good idea to go back and uh, perform those adjustments down the line. All right, so now I'm gonna explain the basics of what we're gonna do here. If you look down here, again, we're gonna be removing this whole bar, including the plastic piece, the metal, and the wheels. So if you look closely here, you're gonna see a spring right on this piece of metal, and we're gonna pop that spring right off. We can retrieve it after we've removed this, uh, this bar. The next thing we're gonna see is a small, there we go, it's kinda of still on there. The next thing you're gonna notice is a small metal paperclip looking piece right here, which I'm gonna pop off, but before I do that, I'm gonna remove this screw and the metal piece that it is holding into place because that's actually what keeps the entire bar from coming right out of there. So let's unscrew that. Magnetic screwdriver wins again. All right. So now you can see I can lift it up and the only thing holding it down is that little piece of metal which just popped right out. So now this is free to come up. You'll also notice that there's this little uh, black tab here. We're gonna need to break that off and bend this piece of metal so that it straightens out and you'll see why in a moment. I'm gonna grab this spring off of here. There we go. Next thing you need to do is just realign the bar, make sure it goes back into place, it's nice and flat, because we do need to move the print head over to the left side now to get it, this uh, side of the bar. And you'll see a similar spring, actually no spring on this side, but you will see a similar little paperclip piece of metal, and then you will see the screw in the metal bracket there. The easiest way to get access to that at this point is to simply go in to perform a head cleaning 
and then we're gonna pull the power right as that print head undocks itself. So there, power's off. We can move this all the way over to the side and you'll see we have another screw and then we have the little paperclip looking piece of uh, metal there holding it into place. So let's go ahead and get that out of there. And just like with the other one, I should be able to just pull this up and there goes the, uh, the paper clip underneath it. So now we can lift up on this side or we can lift up on this side if we move the print head, but we can't just pull it out because each side has the uh, plastic bracket. Now what I'm gonna do, and I, just, I can't show it to you because I have to have two hands to do this, but I'm gonna take a pair of pliers, grab this and break it out this way so that it straightens out the piece of metal as well. So I'm gonna do that right now and then uh, pick right back up. Okay, now you can see I've broken off the piece of uh, plastic there with those pliers and the metal is now straight out. So I can kind of reposition that and align it where it would have been previously if it were installed. And again, we just have to make sure it lays flat so we can bring the print head back to this side. As long as you did everything right, you'll be able to remove this and simply pull it straight out. And there you go. You've now converted the printer and it is ready to go. Since the print head is undocked, I do recommend plugging it back in and powering it up. Uh, move the print head out a little bit and it'll rehome itself and lock itself up. The final steps would be to install the chipless firmware, of course, which I'm not going to go into in this video and also to uh, get yourself a good quality rip so that you can process your images for direct-to-film printing. And there we go, that's it for today.